In this video, I'll talk about how to compare uh, receiver operating characteristics curves for model selections. So uh, these are called ROC curves, rock curves. So what are these curves? Uh, well, this is, so ROC is a graphical way to know the diagnostic ability of a, of a binary classifier. So it's very important to know that it's used for uh, classification algorithm to assess whether a given classification algorithm is performing well or not. Um, now the obvious question is that can it be used for uh, multi-class classification or can it be used for regression problems? Well, for multi-class classification, it's difficult to use, although there are some version of it which can be used for multi-class classification, but ROC is normally not used for multi-class classification. It's used primarily for uh, uh, binary classification. Binary classification is nothing but classifying only two events, right? Like one and zero, something like that. Um, and for regression problems, uh, we normally do not use uh, ROC curves. It's primarily used for classification. Um, so it's used for all kinds of limited dependent variable modeling, logistic regression, probit regression, all kinds of machine learning uh, classification algorithms such as decision tree, random forest, uh, gradient boosting, uh, even for neural networks and so on. Um, so it's a very simple way of analyzing performance of a given model. So what you do is basically uh, compare the true positive rate, which is also known as sensitivity with the false positive rate, right? So it's uh, quite uh, easy to do. And these are self-explanatory. What is a true positive? Say so positive is basically positive so that's true positive and then you have false positive right so a positive but it's false right and you can take an example right for example this now we have this covid test and we can take that example to categorize the test outcome outcome as true positive or false positive also technically we call it as sensitivity and one minus specificity when you do draw a xy uh, graph then what you get is uh, the ROC curve. We'll take an example to see. So theoretically, this is how we calculate. So we calculate the true positive rate. It's also known as sensitivity, recall, hit rate, true positive rate. So in different, uh, in statistics, basically in statistic econometrics, we call it as sensitivity. In machine learning, there are other names also. But this uh, concept has come from engineering disciplines. So in those disciplines, people call it as true positive or TPR simply. So it's simple. TPR's true positive rate is true positive divided by total positive. Okay. And then you have specificity um, or true negative rate, which is the true negative divided by total number of negative, which includes true negative as well as false positive. Once you have TPR and TNR, you basically plot TPR with one minus TNR or sensitivity with respect to one minus specificity. And that's exactly what, how we have plotted here. So here is the ROC curve for a given model. So in the x-axis you have one minus specificity and in the y-axis you have sensitivity and the ROC curve, so this is the ROC curve. It normally always uh, in the upper side of this, uh, this line, this line which is 45 degree to the x-axis. Uh, if the ROC curve is uh, below this 45 degree line, then it's not at all a good model. In fact, in most scenarios, you will not find such a case. Um, in most scenarios, you will find that the ROC curve is above uh, this 45 line, 45 degree line. Okay, um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, the the more area it covers, the better is the model. So let's say for another model, we have an ROC curve something like this. That means the area is higher with the second line, right? Then it's a better model. So that's uh, visually uh, comparing to uh, models in terms of the 
performance. So it's good to actually use in business presentations where metrics like you know, other metrics are difficult to communicate. Uh, if we present through visual forms to graphs, I think it's easier for the non-technical people to understand. So that's where ROC is so um, useful. Then I have another model. Okay, so it's a similar, it's, it's the same model actually with different set of features, different set of independent variables. Now, if you change the number of independent variables or simply take out some of the variables and add a few other variables, then your model performance could vary. How do you then choose the best uh, model? You can compare the ROC and see where you have a better ROC curve and compare the one which is the best one. So you can have multiple models and then you can simply um, uh, compare these ROC curves and select the best one. So easy to do. You can do that in overlay fashion. That is, let's say here we have three models, three version of the same model, basically not three models, but this. You know, it could be different models also, but it's three version of the same model. So in this example, and you see that, you know, the one model, it's very difficult actually to compare actually where you have the highest area. Uh, clearly the, this one, this one, right? The, the light blue one is certainly not the best model because the area is the minimum here. But it's a bit difficult to compare this one and this particular model because they seem to be having a similar area. Although uh, I think we can guess that this particular this particular uh, model is having uh, a better ROC. Okay, as I said, um, we could compare because so this part of the area is common for everything. What matters is where which model has the highest area in the upper part. And that's basically is used for comparison of the model performance. Um, so um, there's another matrix is called area under curve. So it, we can use that in conjunction with this particular graph to assess models where, you know, it's not very clear between two, um, uh, well, two, two graphs, right? Uh, like in this case, right? For one of this is clear, but the other two is very similar. So it's used to this called EUC. It's basically a number that lies between zero and one. So the one which is having highest area under curve is the better model. Now you might wonder that why don't we simply use AUC, uh, which is much easier to compare because these are simply numbers, right? Between, well, it's a fraction rather, not, not a number between zero and one. So we compare and, you know, it's easy, but with these graphs, actually it's better to, you know, it's easier to communicate with the wider audience. So that's uh, how we compare a few more things to know about uh, the AUC and ROC. Um, for example, uh, if the AUC of two models um, is exactly the same or very, very similar. Right? They're not statistically different. How do we then select the best model? Well, then you need to uh, take into account other uh, matrices such as Akai key information criteria or uh, squares Bayesian criteria, SBC, BIC. So these are parsimony matrices. That means um, it these matrices um, uh, tell us which model is um, the simpler. So two models with equal performance the one that is simpler will be preferred, right? It's easier to use, easier to implement, easier to maintain. So, so that's uh, known as parsimony. So the lower AIC, the better is the model. Okay. But AIC should not be the first criteria for selection of the model. So that's something to keep in mind, um, at least for these models, the classification models, uh, it should be a second criteria. First criteria should be model performance. And the second one is the parsimony. So we have to use ROC, AUC and AIC in conjunction with each other to arrive at the, uh, or to select the uh, best model out of a set of a different models. We can also use expert advice. Um, it's uh, also very important. And uh, oftentimes in areas such as, uh, you know, model building in uh, financial risk, in uh, financial crime, um, in marketing, we use uh, experts advice to select the best models. Um, they actually tell us which set of 
features or which set of independent variables are um, are more suitable for a, for a given model. So that is also helpful. Other practical criteria, for example, implementation, ease of using the model, maintenance. These criteria can also help us out selecting the best model. Uh, last thing, uh, which is Gini, is also another popular metrics use. So oftentimes we sometimes confuse how is Gini different from AUC, ROC. It's a um, so Gini can be calculated using AUC. So Gini is twice AUC minus one. So uh, they are very similar uh, matrices. Uh, if you have AUC, you can calculate Gini. If you have Gini, you can calculate um, AUC. Right, um, and the bigger is the Gini, or bigger is the um, AUC, higher is the AUC, better is the model. Okay, so they're pretty similar matrices. Thanks.